The power of God's love gives rest. The power of God's love gives us peace and harmony, not only with the surroundings, but also within ourselves. Sa marami po nating counseling encounters, we meet people who are weary, conflicted, get guilty. And many times, after a thorough discussion, we realize that many of them are needlessly guilty. Maraming mga tao ay hating-hati ang loob, hirap na hirap ang loob, dahil maraming pinapasan na guilt feelings, usig ng budhi, na yun naman pala, hindi kailangan na dalhin kasi hindi naman dapat siyang usigin ng kanyang budhi. Matapos na himay-himayin ang kwento, mga problema ng buhay, at dinadalang mga guilt feelings, many people realize that it was not necessary to have become guilty at all. At sinasabi ng iba, a heavy load just lifted. Yan po ang isa sa mga pinakamadalas kong madidilig na comment ng mga counselors na gumaan ang pasanin, lumuwag ang paghinga. Guminhawa ang pakiramdam, lumiwanag ang pananaw. Ito ang mga pangako ng Panginoong Yesus. Kaya siya pumarito sa lupa. Sabi niya, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. At yan po ang pangako ng Panginoon. Kaya dapat ang sino mang nakakakilala sa Panginoon, sino man na naliligtas sa pangalan ng Panginoong Yesus, ay tumatanggap ng kapahingahan. Sapagat ang gusto ibigay ng Panginoong Yesus sa mga tao ay kapahingahan, luwag ng dibdib. At sabi niya, sa akin kayo, makinig. Para na niyang sinabing, huwag sa iba. So niya, learn from me. I am gentle and humble. So ang Christian counseling, ang Christian teaching is gentle and humble. Sa minggan nun, magaan ang ipapataw ko sa inyong mga balikat dahil tutulungan ko kayo at dahil ako na ang nagdala ng bigat na yun. Ito ba ang napapala natin sa ating pagiging Kristiyano? Sa pagsali sa church, sa pagiging active, because Christ's mission is to give rest and comfort. Pahinga sa mga hindi makahinga, ginhawa sa mga lubhang nahihirapan. So, therefore, Christian mission should be the same. Hindi ka maligtaran. Sadly, many people, when they become religious, are burdened with guilt. Lalong napapahirapan ng loob, napapagilty at nauusig, lalong nagiging mapagkonwari, lalong dumarami ang itinatago, at lalong humihirap ang tunay na kalagayan habang nagpapanggap sa panglabas na ang lahat ay mainam. The ministry of the church is not to accuse. Accusing, accusing is the work of Satan. Revelations 12.10 Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of of His Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God, day and night, has been hurled down. So the accuser of our brothers, yun daw taga-usig, ay napalaglag na ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoong Yesus. So ang gawang mang usig ay hindi gawa ng church at hindi gawa ng kristyano. Ito'y gawa ni Satanas. Pero bakit ang dami-dami mga kristyano walang ginawa ko ni mang usig? Nagiging mahirap tuloy sa isang taong maging totoo, kailangan siyang magpanggap dahil baka siya mausig. At ito po ang pamagat ng ating pag-aaral ngayon. Guilty? Could you be burdened by a needless load? Meron ka ba dyan na pinaghihirapang dalhin na hindi naman pala dapat? Salamat Ama dahil kayo mapagpalaya, lalong-lalo sa ministry ng iyong anak na si Jesus. 
Turuan niyo po kami maunawa ito, may apply ito sa aming buhay. Patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan, buong puso namin tinatanggap ang inyong pagbubuong muli sa aming mga kasiraan, pagtatayo sa aming mga pagkakadapa, at paglilinis sa aming mga karumihan. Be our speaker, teach us, set us free. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. What are the major sources of guilt? Ano ba mga pinagmumulan ng mga pag-uusig ng ating budhi? Unang-una na, at natural lang naman, broken commands of God. Mga alam nating talagang salita at utos ng Diyos na ating nila, nilalapastangan, hindi sinusunod. Natural, nagkakaroon tayo ng guilt. Because we were created to obey God. And whenever we disobey God, we are wired to feel guilty. But there's another source of guilt, which should not be commands of men mistaken for commands of God. Utos ng akala natin ay utos ng Diyos. Yung pala utos lang ng tao. Salita na akala natin ay salita ng Diyos, yung pala ay salita lang ng tao. God gave the Jews ten commandments. But over time, the religious authorities added 613 mitzvot or more commands and prohibitions. Sampu lang ang utos ng Diyos. Ang idinagdag ng mga pare, 613. Nasa salitang Hebrew ay tinatawag na mitzvot. In other words, it was added to the original commandments of God. So a big and wide source of Of guilt. Kung yung sampu hindi mo na masunod-sunod, dagdagan pa ba naman ang 613 more? Kaya sa Israel hanggang ngayon kung lalakad kayo sa kalsada o kahit sa New York, may mga hudyo na iba yung ayos sa mga patilya, may mga sombrero, may mga ibang ayos ng buhok, may mga tali-tali sa bewang. Ibig sabihin nun, they are conservative Jews. They are committed to obey not only the Ten Commandments but also the 613 misvots. Can you imagine, bawat oras, bawat minuto, may opportunity ka to break something sa dinami-rami ng bawal. At pag nabibreak mo yon, akala mo na break mo yung salita mismo ng Diyos. Iba ang value, iba ang weight ng mga salita, kautosan ng Diyos Ama, Anak, at Espiritu Santo, sa mga salita ng patriarchs of the Old Testament, ng prophets, o ng mga disciples of the New Testament, or the church leaders after The New Testament. Words of great biblical persons are not always and necessarily the words of God. In fact, sometimes these great biblical persons are mistaken. Ang dami niyan kahit sa New Testament. Si Peter nga natawag pa ni Lord Jesus na Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Maling maling ang pinagsasabi mo. Si Peter pa yon. So what do we do with the words of the prophets, of the patriarchs? Of the disciples, of the apostles, what do we do with the words of pastors and priests and religious leaders? Bring them, refer them to the words of Jesus. For everything else that completely agrees with the word of Jesus, value it, obey it as word of God, because it agrees and it comes from the word of Jesus. But if it has no basis at all in the words of Jesus, then study if it's authoritative, if it really must be. To kill or die for, is it really a must to obey? Because even in the New Testament, there are some words of the disciples that are just for specific persons or groups of persons that received the instruction, not necessarily universal for all people at all time in all places. Katulad ng utos sa limbawa ng Diyos kay Noah na gumawa ng sasakyang pandagat para sila lumutang, hindi yun utos sa iyo kay Noah lang. Ang utos sa limbawa ni Paul sa mga babae sa Corinth na lagi magbelo, magpahaba ng buhok, pang kanila lang, hindi para sa lahat ng babae sa buong planeta, sa lahat ng panahon, sa lahat ng dako. Kasi may cultural reasons why those commands were given. Yung mga ipinagbawal na pagkain, ipinagbawal sa mga Hudyo, hindi naman sa lahat ng tao sa planeta. Who knows, the Jews might be genetically designed not to eat those foods. Eh, pero kung ikaw naman ay Ilocana, o ikaw ay Bisaya, baka pwede sa'yo kasi iba naman yung genes mo. 
So hindi mo pwedeng kopyahin, sundin, at pairalin sa buhay mo ang lahat ng utos at salita na nasa Biblia, kahit galing yun sa Biblia, kung hindi naman yun para sa'yo. Kaya dumarami ang pabigat, dumarami ang batas, dumadami tuloy ang nalalabag na batas na hindi naman pala dapat. Tapos lungkot na lungkot ka, durog na durog ang iyong puso, guilting guilty ka, hindi naman pala dapat. What are some examples of sources of guilt? Let's read from Matthew 12:1 to 8. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were walking through some wheat fields. His disciples were hungry and began picking and eating grains of wheat. Some Pharisees noticed this and said to Jesus, "Why are your disciples picking grain on the Sabbath? They are not supposed to do that." So, Sabat ang pinag-uusapan, a legitimate member of the Big Ten Commandments. Pero meron silang nalimutan. Ang kausap ng Diyos sa Ten Commandments sa Sabat ay employers and masters. Sabi niya, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, do not work. Do not make your servants, your female servants, male servants, and do not make your animals work. So ibinigay ng Diyos yung commandment sa mga amo para huwag nilang abusuhin yung mga tauhan at mga hayop, pagpahingahin man lang minsan isang linggo. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng huwag pagtrabahuhin. Ngayon, Sabat, namitas ng konting makakain na bungang kahoy itong mga disciples, Inuusig na sila ng mga religious leaders dahil bakit kayo nagtatrabaho ng Sabbath? See? Wrong application. And for many hundreds of years, the Israelites were burdened with the law of the Sabbath. Na hindi makapagluto pag Sabbath, meron kang hindi ka pwede maghaba, maglakad ng mahaba, na-regulate na nung 613 more rules. Sa matalang ang espiritu lang nun, dapat pagpahingahin ang mga taong nasasakupan mo. Pero kung ikaw, kumating likod mo, gusto mong kamutin, hindi ka man pinipilit ng amo mo na gawin yun para sa sarili mo, you are free to do it. The Sabbath regulation was for that rich people and masters will not abuse their employees or their slaves or even the animals. So, Matthew 12.3-8, sumagot ang Panginoon. You surely must have read what David did when he and his followers were hungry. He went into the house of God, and then they ate the sacred loaves of bread that only priests are allowed to eat. Haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests are allowed to work in the temple on the Sabbath? But no one says that they are guilty of breaking the law of the Sabbath. I tell you that there is something here greater than the temple. Don't you know that the scriptures mean when they say, instead of offering sacrifices to me, I want to you to be merciful to others. If you knew what this means, you would not condemn those innocent disciples of mine. So the Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath. Sabi ni Lord, nagpuputok ang butsi niyo na pumita sila ng konting bungang kahoy para kumain dahil sabat. Eh bakit ang mga pare nagtatrabaho sa loob ng templo pag sabat? Ba't sila exempted? Dahil ang ginagawa nila paglilingkod sa kapwa. So, kami niya, ang mahalaga mapaglingkuran ng mga nangangailangan. Hindi yung to the letter, susundin mo yung regulasyon. In fact, the regulation was meant for masters not to abuse people under them. So, kindness to the needy was an exemption, according to the Lord. Jesus was trying to take the guilt away from certain acts of piety or acts out of needs. Surely, napakarami mga Jews ang napunta sa underground sa pagkukunwari at pagbabalat kayo pag sabat. Hindi nila ipinapakita sa ibang nagtatrabaho sila. Pero surely, pinibreak din nila yun. Long ago, I was in Israel and I took a taxi And we were traveling across Jerusalem on a Sabbath. And we were being stoned by many people. Nagagalit sila doon sa driver dahil nagtatrabaho pag Sabbath. Pero yung driver nagtatrabaho, kudyo rin siya. Kasi kailangan rin niya mabuhay. Siguro meron siyang matinding pangangailangan for funds. So to feed the hungry, the regulation on the Sabbath, 
and even the holy bread were bended. In fact, dalawa yung inungkat ni Jesus. Sabi niya, nalimutan niyo na ba? Kahit yung bandal na tinapay na nandun sa loob ng bahay dalanginan na dapat pari lang ang kakain, pumasok si David, may dalang mga lalaking gutom na gutom, kinain nila yung tinapay, ipinakain ng priest. O, nagalit ba ang Diyos? So, sino umimbento na yung tinapay doon sa dambana ay para lang sa mga pare? Sino umimbento ng batas? E di mga pare. Hindi naman nagalit ang Diyos nung kinain nila David yun. Dahil ang pagkain ay para sa naguguto. Malangan mamatay ka sa guto, may tinapay dito na. Sabi ng batas, para sa mga pare, so kung kainin. At alam niyo ba, napakarami mga tao na nagugutom, nahihirapan, nagdurusa. Akala nila kasi, dahil sa pati lang sundin, ang akala nila ay utos ng Diyos. Needless lang naman pala yung suffering nila. So napakahalaga. Kindness over technicality. And Jesus says, Should the kind be guilty for being kind? Should I be guilty for allowing my people to eat and to pick fruits on a Sabbath while they are hungry? Will my act of mercy not exempt us from this law? Sabbath pa yun, ha? Paano pa kung hindi Sabbath yung binrik wala sa Ten Commandments? Siguro mas pwede. Basta tama yung konteksto. Mark 7, 1-9 Some Pharisees and several teachers of the law of Moses from Jerusalem came and gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of His disciples ate without first washing their hands. So kanina, eating on a Sabbath, picking fruits on a Sabbath, ngayon, eating without washing their hands. The Pharisees and many other Jewish people obeyed the teachings of their ancestors. They always wash their hands in the proper way before eating. At alam niyo ba yung proper way of washing your hand? There is a proper way of washing a cup, a glass, a plate, utensils. There's always a proper way. Therefore, there are many improper ways. At again, pag hindi mo nasunod yun, guilty ka na naman of breaking the law. So ngayon, ang issue nila, ba't sila naguhugas ang kamay? Verse 4, None of them will eat anything they buy in the market until it is washed. Yun daw ang ugali ng kanilang mga aninuno. They also follow a lot of other teachings such as washing of cups, pitchers, and bowls. The Pharisees and teachers ask Jesus, Why don't your disciples obey what our ancestors taught us to do? Why do they eat without washing their hands? So now, washing one of the 613 missed bot. Mark 7, 6-9, Jesus replied, You are nothing but show-offs. Pasikat lang kayo. Palabas. The prophet Isaiah was right when he wrote that God had said, All of you praise me with your words. But you never really think about me. It is useless for you to worship me when you teach rules made up by humans. You disobey God's commands in order to obey what humans have taught. You are good at rejecting God's commands so that you can follow your own teachings. So Jesus here was referring to those 613 misvots. Sabi niya, imbento niyo lang yung rules na yan. At sa paggigit ninyo na masunod ang mga inimbento niyong mga patakaran, ang hindi tuloy nasusunod ay yung mas malalim, mas mainam na utos ng Diyos. Ano yon Yung maging mabuti, maging mabait, maging matulungin sa kapwa, mapagtanggap, maibigin. Yun ang mahalaga. Pero ang pinapahalagahan nyo, ano dapat isuot, gano'ng kahaba ang palda, gano'ng kahaba ang buhok, may hikaw ba ang lalaki o wala, magtatato ka ba o hindi, ano ba ang kakainin sa Lord's Supper, anong uri ng tinapay, ano ang pwedeng tugtog, piano lang ba, organ, pwede ba ang drums, ang dami-dami niyong arte. Hindi naman yan galing sa Diyos. Nag-aaway-away kayo, nagkakagukagulo kayo, anong version ng Bible ang babasahin? Ipipilit ito iba, isa lang ang version na tama, yung version namin. At mag-aaway-away sila. But none of those versions existed during the time of Jesus. So paano mo sasabihin lang ang version na tama, eh, hindi nga nag exist yun nung panahon ni Jesus? Hanggang ngayon, mga kapatid, ang daming pagpapahirap ng simbahan, anumang simbahan, sa mga sumusunod. 
Kasi imbento ng imbento ng maraming rules, dumadami tuloy ang pagkakataon to break those rules or to fail, and people end up being guilty. So here, Jesus identifies a mitzvah as made up by man, competing with and prioritized by the religious over God's own commands. Katulad ng pagtatalo, ano ba yung baptism? Pouring? Sprinkling? Immersion. Hindi yan pinroblema ni Jesus. Marami lang naging mga modes of baptism later on in the New Testament and all of them biblical. But after the New Testament, now Christians everywhere are quarreling which mode is the correct one. Another mitzvot. Nadagdag na doon sa 613. Idinagdag ng Christians. Kasi kung may Ten Commandments ang Diyos, may 613 mitzvot sa mga Jews, eh ang mga Christian, ang dami pang idinagdag lalo. Kaya ngayon ang Kristiyano, wala nang maisip ko, di masama ako, mali ako, nagkamali ako, nagkasala ako, puro guilt. Now, Jesus exposes the needless burden that the religious impose on the people. Matthew 23, 1-4 Jesus said to the crowds and to His disciples, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law pile heavy burdens on people's shoulders and won't lift a finger to help. Sabi yung mga religious leaders ninyo, walang ginawa kundi patawan kayo ng mabibigat na mga pasanin, hindi naman kayo tinutulungan. Tapos pag nagkulang kayo, uusigin kayo. Ang daming regulasyon. Dumagdag na ng dumagdag. Ano dapat ang suot ng choir? Ano dapat ang uniform ng mga babae? Ano dapat ang ganito? Ano dapat ang ganun? Dapat ba mag-girlfriend o mag-boyfriend ang isang youth na hindi pag-graduate? Pagka ba member kayo ng choir, hindi kayo pwede magligawan? Lahat ng rules na yan, invento na lang ng tao. Hindi ko sinasabing masama yung rules, pero invento ng relihiyon. Always tuloy, there is an opportunity to fail and there's an opportunity to be guilty. So guminhawa ba ang buhay mo nung naging Christian ka? O lalong sumikip? Nakalaya ka ba o lalo ka lang ngayon nagpapanggap para hindi ka mapagalitan o madisiplina? Pampahirap ang sobrang relihiyon, Pampabigat, pampasikip ng dibdib. At hindi yan ang misyon ni Jesus. Matthew 23, 15, Jesus speaks, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Gumagastos pa kayo sa mga misyon, sabi ni Jesus. Tumatawid pa kayo ng mga dagat at bundok para may kaluluwa na madala sa inyong mga pinaniniwalaan at matapos sumunod sa inyo na doble lang ang pagiging anak ng impyerno. They become sons of hell, they become judgmental, or if not, they become conflicted and tormented. Dati hindi siya guilty, ngayon guilty na. Mabuti sana kung galing sa Diyos yung pagpapagilty para siya magbagong buhay. Eh kung mitzvot lang pala, church ordinance lang pala, na inimbento ng board, o inimbento ng elders, o inimbento ng pastor, o ng pare, o ninyo man, paano na yun? Sayang ang religion pag ganyan ang ginagawa. Hindi tinutupad ang utos ni Jesus, kabaligtaran ang ginagawa, mas pinahihirapan ang converts. I love Jesus very much. You know, Jesus in His ministry of comfort reduced all the commands to just two. Love God and your fellow men. Your Ten Commandments, forget it! 613 misvots, forget it! Matthew 22, 35-40, one of them, an expert of the law, tested Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. 
ni wala sa Ten Commandments yung binanggit niya? Sabi niya, anyo, dalawa lang ang mahalagang commandment. Kaya siguro ipinadala ng Diyos, Ama ang Diyos, anak, para ituwid ang pagkakaligaw mismo ng templo, mismo ng relihiyon. Kailangang itama, kailangang magkaroon ng reformation. Sabi niya, dalawa lang. Love God, love your fellow men. Love is above all. Gusto ko kayong hamunin. At this point, humanap kayo ng application sa sinabi na yan ni Lord. Niya, ito lang ang unahin mo. Love God and love your fellow men. Paano niya niya apply ngayon sa mga moral laws na nakasiksik sa inyong utak? Paano niyo iya apply yan sa inyong concepts of right and wrong? Sa inyong concept of justice and judgmentalism? Sa inyong concept of religiosity? Sabi ni Lord, ito ang mahalaga. Love God, love your fellow men. Applyan nyo. I cannot do it for you. But you have to say, itong law na ito ng bahay na nabe-break ng asawa ko, lagi niyang iniiwan yung mga damit niyang nakakalat kung nagbibihis siya. What will I apply? The law of the house or the law of love? Nagkamali itong aking anak. What will I apply? Yung rules ng family na hindi ka pwedeng bumagsak sa klase mo kung hindi, bla 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 or the rule of love. Nagkamali ang asawa ko, nagtaksil sa akin, nagsisisi ngayon. What will I apply? Justice or mercy? Tinuroan na tayo ni Jesus kung anong dapat mangibabaw. Not legalism. Legalism belongs in the court of law but not in daily life. Because if you're going to be legalistic, no one will love you. And you cannot be loving anybody. You will always insist, sabi ng paragraph 10, article 3, sentence number 2, pero walang magmamahal sa'yo. Pag legalista ka masyado. So sabi ni Lord, love. You cannot go wrong when you love. Because God is love. And it is the greatest of all the commandments. Eh, hindi nga kasama sa commandment yun eh. Pero si Jesus, sinabi niya, it is the real commandment and it is the greatest. Another source of guilt, misreading, misinterpretation, and misapplication of God's Word. Okay, God's Word talaga. Hindi words lang ng kung sino, hindi words lang ng kung sinong prophet or uh, disciple na labag sa sinasabi ng Diyos Ama o Diyos Anak o Diyos Espiritu Santo, hindi salita lang ng pastor o ng religious leader. Talagang God's Word. Pero paano pa maaaring maging caution of unnecessary guilt? When you misread, misinterpret, and misapply it. God's Word nga. You have good intention, but probably bad scholarship. Mali ang basa. Mali ang pagpapakahulugan at paglalapat. Tulad na lang ng mga isyo ng belo, eh ang kausap, Corinthian women, hindi naman ikaw. So ngayon, hirap na hirap ka, guilty-guilty ka, hindi ka nagbebelo, o dyan na hindi nagbebelo, eh mali naman ang basa mo eh. Although word naman ni Paul yun, hindi naman yun word of God, yung tungkol sa belo. Kasi hindi naman God si Paul, hindi God si Peter, hindi God si David or Abraham. Isa lang ang God, di ba? Kaya pag nagbabasa kayo, letter to the Corinthians, letter to the Ephesians, who nyo sabihing, Thus is the word of God. No, it's the word of Peter. It's the word of Paul. It's the word of whoever. It's the word of God. Kasi those men are not gods. Tapat malinaw yon. Misa nagbabasa ka ng kung ano ano ng mga letters yon sa Bible. Tapos mo word of God. It's the word of God. If the teaching perfectly coincides with, agrees with, and follows the words of Jesus. Otherwise, it's a human opinion. It's the opinion of Peter, it's the opinion of Paul, it's the opinion of James, but it's not the Word of God. Dapat malinaw yun. Magkakaiba ang tindi, bigat at halaga ng mga salita. So what are the additional causes of guilt? Let us cite some examples. In addition to Old Testament and New Testament teachings, ito na ang sources of guilt as we have mentioned. Congregational, sectarian rules, and regulation yung mga rules and regulations sa inyong kongregasyon, ng inyong kapatiran, ng inyong fellowship, whatever. At marami yan. Nagdagdag sila sa mga misvot. Mode of baptism, 
elements of the Lord's Supper, attire, length of hair, may Christmas ba o wala? Issue rin yan. Church ba kayo o fellowship lang? Nadidinig nyo yan, di ba? Ang pastor nyo ba reverend o pastor o brother lang? Alam nyo, hindi ko masikmura na ang tao tawaging reverend. Kaya gusto ko tawag nyo lang sa akin, Kuya Ed. Kasi, kumisan, pastor ba? Wow! Pero may reverend ba? Ay, meron ba o wala? What's the big deal? Kumisan yung sobrang pagpapahalaga sa title is the reason why I refuse all of these titles. Kakilakilabot, may tao bang reverend? Banal? Kabanal-banalan? Ano siya? Katipunan? Na anak ng bayan? At ang dami pa niyan, et cetera, et cetera, ad nauseum, nakakasuka na sa dami ang mga congregational rules. Hindi ka pwedeng tumugtog sa banda pag mahaba ang buhok, nasan yung verse? Hindi mo pwedeng ligawan ng kapwa choir member, pareho naman kayong binatat talaga, bakit? Ang dami. Well, if it works in some congregations, that's their business. But I don't think it is a word of God to die or kill for. It's an opinion. Siguro yung mga church leaders, sakit na na, mas effective yung ministry, mas less ang problem pag ganun yung policy. But sometimes, the obedience of that policy stops people from being human. At hindi rin naman sinusunod ng mga choir, nagliligawan din sila, nakalihim lang. It's only underground. And therefore, they are guilty. That's what I mean. You create rules that force them to go underground and to feel guilty. Kung honorable, parehong single, ano nang pakialaman mo magligawan yung mga yan? Ba't pati yun, pinapakialam na mo pa? Diba? So, napaka-importante na sabihin natin, ay, policy lang yan ng mga tao. But then, you are a member of a church, so you obey. Ay, huwag mag-obey, di join another church. Pero pag nandun ka, eh, di mag-obey ka. Alam naman nandun ka, tas ay huwag mag-obey. At yun ang problema. Gano'ng karami ang ilalagay natin na mga regulasyones that will force people to either sacrifice, feel guilty, or disobey? Kailangan ba talaga? Marami niyan, mga gravely misunderstood, over-sensationalized, and over-demonized aspects of life, like lust, sexuality. Sobra ang pagpapagilty ng simbahan sa mga tao when they have sexual feelings. Pero sino ba ang nag-create ng human body? Di ba Diyos? So bakit kung magiging guilty ngayon kung nakikiliti ka, na-attract, basta hindi mo ginagawa to the point na nagiging kasalanan na, nagbe-break ka na ng rule, nangaagaw ka na lang hindi sa'yo. You know, creation, design, and biology all express the intention of the Creator. Then religion, imposes unrealistic and unnatural expectations and requirements. Ituturo sa mga young boys, naku, hindi kayo dapat nakakaroon ng sexual arousal pag nakakita kayo ng maganda. E anong gagawin mo? They are wired to be aroused. So, guilty-guilty na ngayon sina-arouse. Ang mahalaga lang, what will you do with the arousal? How will you contain it? How will you control it? How will you decently put an end to its urges and the fevers that it gives you. But for people to feel guilty for being normal, created by our God to be like this, it is an unnecessary guilt. Labag na yan sa biology one. Remember that God is God of biology two. So ang nagiging result is guilt for what is only natural. God is the designer and author of nature. Now again, challenge number two, apply and process this in your own life. How will you differentiate between even sexual attraction that you should be guilty of and that which you should not be guilty of? May dumaang maganda na attract ka, magigilty ka na ba? O magigilty ka kung sinundan mo siya at nirape mo doon sa dilim? O inagaw mo siya sa asawa niya. Pero yung attract ka, sabi nga ni Martin Luther, you cannot stop birds from flying over your heads, but you can stop them from nesting in your hair. So may mga natural lang. Huwag masyadong serious. May mga tao, wala nang ginagawa kundi mag-confess. Lagi, 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 lagi. May young person, o ba't nakayuko ka naman, nag-confess po ako, nagandahan po ako sa dumaan. Hindi wala ka nang gagawin, hindi mag-confess araw-araw, minuminuto, kasi marami maganda. When you do what you would to be godly, 
Forgive yourself for imperfections. Forgive yourself for your human and natural impulses. For all you know, God might not even be offended. Living creatures are designed and wired to multiply. Isa yan sa mga utos lagi ng Diyos, go and multiply. The birds will multiply. The plants will multiply. Humans will multiply. Everything and everywhere. Creation is filled with animals and plants that are wired to multiply. Therefore, they are to be sexually oriented. Kahit ang bulaklak. The bulaklak is the sexual organ of the plant. At kung ano-anong ginagawa ng bulaklak para umakit ng bubuyog. Di ba nagpapabango, may mga kulay, may mga kung ano mga lumilipad-lipad na mga design. All of it to attract pollination. All of it to attract sexual intercourse through the insects. So that the, the flower will become a fruit and the fruit will become a tree. So mamasamay niyo ba yung bulaklak na nagpapaganda? Mama sa niya sa bulaklak na, di bale, wala akong kulay pero mabango naman ako. Kaya lahat ng mga bulaklak na walang kulay, mabango. Yung mga wala namang bango, makulay naman ako. Dinadaan sa mga kung ano gimmick to attract insects. And if plants would do that, will you demonize people? If they like to be attractive or if they get attracted? Kailangan lang, ilalagay mo sa lugar yung susunod ng mga hakbang niyan. Pero don't be needlessly guilty for being alive. Remember that you are spiritually imperfect, especially after the fall. But remember also what God remembers about you. Psalm 103.13, 103.14 rather, because God knows we are made of dust. Alam niya, gagawa tayo sa lupa. At hindi laging masamang we are made of dust. Naaalala lagi ng Diyos, oo nga, nilikha ko sila to reproduce among themselves in a sexual way. Kahit mga bubuyog, walang inisip kundi mag-sex, di ba? Mga aso, mga pagong, mga halaman, lahat. But of course, we humans are governed by higher spiritual laws. But you should not demonize yourself for being alive and for being sexually alive. Except that God has given us ways how to address these needs and this need of humanity to continue to procreate. Pero hindi laging guilty, laging guilty, laging guilty. Merong dapat ikaw guilty, merong hindi. Kayo ang pumili. But remember biology, plants, animals, and humans are made of dust. It could mean are sexually oriented. That is the way we reproduce. Psalm 51.5 Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. What a sobering realization or acceptance. Hindi ito laging self-condemnation. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. It could be a very enlightened way of accepting oneself. Oo nga. I can strive to be better. I can strive to be good. Once in a while, I will have some dosages of momentary perfection. But I cannot be perfect for long because I am made of dust. And in sin, my mother conceived me. It is not meant to justify wanton wrongdoing. But it is meant also to make us realize that there is an end to what we can do as humans and we should not be guilty for being humans because we are still in the human frame. Another cause of guilt, which should not always be, is the issue of pleasure. Diyan magaling ang church, o sige lahat ang nag-enjoy. Bawal mag-enjoy. Bawal lang masarap na pagkain at marami. Bawal lang magandang damit. Bawal lang alahas. Bawal lang ganito. Bawal lang malaking bahay. Bawal lang ganito. Lahat. But Solomon says, in all his wisdom, enjoy life. So will you be guilty for enjoying? Sabi, naku, tama po ba pastor na magpa-party po kami? Ang dami namin gagastos at tapos maraming mahirap. Eh, gusto mo, huwag ka na mag-party. Pamigyan mo lang sa mahirap lahat ng pera mo. Eh, mahirap pa rin naman po sila kahit ibigay namin yung pera namin eh. Eh, di mag-party kayo ngayon para huwag ka mag-guilty. Magpadala ka ng pagkain doon sa mga mahirap mong kapit-bahay. 
Kung magpadala ka ng donation sa charity, a certain percent of your budget, pero alam mo, hindi ka na mag-party, binibless ka naman ng Diyos with abundance, tapos mamumuhay ka rin na parang mahirap, parang binaliwala mo naman yung blessing sa'yo ng Diyos. So, lalagyan mo ng balanse para di ka mag-guilty. Marami pang issue, especially the issue of divorce. Alam nyo, kung masusunod lamang ang napakaraming unhappy couples, they will like to have divorce. But many are confused. Many are condemned. And many suffer needlessly. And one gravely misunderstood verse is Malachi 2.16. I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel, and I hate a man's covering himself with violence as well as with his garment says the Lord Almighty. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith. Ano ang kahulugan ng mahiwagang verse na ito na kinukote ng lahat ng Christian who are against divorce? But they usually quote it out of context. Sabi ng Diyos, ayoko ng divorsyo na para bang ginagamit lang yung divorsyo ng mga tao na damit, pang takip sa kanila mga violence pang takip sa kanilang mga bisyo at mga kasamaan. Here, divorce refers to Israel's unfaithfulness to and departure from God than to a husband and wife separation. Yun ang problema sa bad scholarship. Ang tunay na tinutukoy dito ay ang paghiwalay ng Israel sa Diyos, hindi yung paghiwalay ng babae at lalaki mag-asawa. Ginamit lang yung metaphor ng marriage, pero ang tunay na tinutukoy ng subject matter, pagtalikod ng Israel sa Diyos pakikitungo sa ibang mga Diyos-Diyosan. Marriage was used only as a metaphor or a symbol, but Malachi is not talking about human marriage. It's talking about the partnership, the covenant between God and man. At yung salitang divorce in biblical vocabulary also referred to man's abuse of it, of this empowering and destroying women. Tatandaan nyo, kung yung bread nung araw ay tinapay na ngayon ay pwedeng pera na ang ibig sabihin, nung araw ang mouse ay dagang hinahabol ng pusa, ngayon yung kasama ng computer. Kung ang virus nung araw ay yung may sipon ka tubo, ngayon yung computer mo ang meron, na iiba ang kahulugan ng the same word, ganun din yung divorce. Yung divorce na pag-aalam natin ngayon na paghihiwalay ng mag-asawa, hindi ganun ang eksak kahulugan ng divorce nung araw. So what was the divorce that God hated? Sinasabi niya yung covering himself with violence using divorce. Breaking faith, according to Malachi 2.16, is like divorce. But mostly, sa Old and New Testament, pag binabagit ang divorce, may loaded meaning yan. Pag-abuso ng lalaki sa babae. Paano yun? Matatandaan natin na si Moses, sabi niya, nag siya, mga lalaki, kung di-divorce nyo yung mga asawa nyo, bigyan niya ng certificate of divorce. Why a certificate of divorce? Para mas humirap naman sa lalaki na basta-basta na lang mang divorce. Why? Nung araw, sasabihin lang ng lalaki sa kanyang asawang babae, ayoko na sa'yo, divorce na tayo, tsupi, talsik na ang babae. Ganun lang. Matabang ang sinigang, divorce. Hindi ka good in bed, divorce. Hindi ka maagang bumangon, divorce. Kahit ano, pwedeng i-divorce ang lalaki ang babae. Pero hindi pwedeng i-divorce ang babae ang lalaki. Unfair, no? So sabi ni Moses, mga lalaki, kung magpapan-divorce kayo, bigyan nyo ng certificate. At least pupunta ka pa sa pare, papapirmahan mo pa, medyo mahirap, baka ma-counsel ka, mapigil ka, dahil wala namang kalatoy-latoy ang dahilan ng divorce mo. Meron pa mga lalaki, may magugustuhan silang ibang babae, pero siyempre alam nila kasalanan ng makiapid doon dahil may asawa sila. Di-divorce nila yung babae ngayong gabi. Makikiapid sila doon sa ibang babae ngayong magdamag. Bukas ng umaga, sasabi na sa babae, balik ka na dito, asawa na uli kita. Iba, di-divorce mo na ako. Ang patunay mo. So sabi ni Moses, bigyan niyo ng certificate. Kasi ang dali-daling baligtar niya ng lalaki yung babae. Ang dali-daling niyang pahirapan. So, the certificate of divorce was a protection for women. Hindi yun pag sang-ayon na basta mo na lang siya i-divorce. Binigyan man lang kahit konting 
protection. Now, ito yung divorce that God hates. Yung I hate divorce. God and Jesus hated divorce. The instrument by which men so easily threw women away. Only to pick them up at will. That was a divorce God hated. God and Jesus hated the kind of divorce that abused the weak. That caused women and the weaker partner to suffer. Yun ang divorce na tinutukoy. The word divorce then does not exactly mean what divorce means now. So hate pa rin ba ng Diyos ang divorce? Kung ang dahilan at ang pagdi-divorce ay para mapalaya ang sino mang partner na hihirapan, nagdurusa, nalalagay sa pangani dahil murderous or insane yung husband, pinagtataksilan, inaabuso ng harap-harapan, will God still hate a divorce in that context? Yun ang pangatlong challenge. Isipin nyo. I-apply nyo sa buhay nyo. Kasi maraming tao, sa pagsunod lang sa do not divorce, nawasak na yung buong buhay nila, e eh, kaisa-isa lang yung buhay, paano ko nagkamali ka pala ng pinakasalan? Hindi yung bisyo na, dinidivorce ko siya kasi mabaho ang paa, kasi wala ka sumilik, kasi hindi kumikita, bla bla bla, hindi yon Pero yung talagang, ang napangasawa mo, baliw, pinaplansya ka habang tulog ka. Pag bangon mo, nakabitin ka, binibigti ka pala. Inuuwi ang ka ng babaeng tatlo mo sabay-sabay sa bahay mo, wala kang magawa. Sa palagay nyo, pag dinivorce yung husband nyo na yun, hate pa rin ang God yung divorce. Think. Because God is kind and God likes the weak to be strengthened. The imprisoned to be free. What if you are prisoned? Imprisoned in a horrible, nightmarish partnership. Will God still hate the divorce? Think. Even adultery and covetousness were forbidden, mainly because women were counted as their husband's properties. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid, na kaya pinagbabawal yung covetousness, yung 10th commandment, you should not covet your neighbor's wife, because property laws would be broken. What do I mean? Balikan natin ang Exodus 20.17, the 10th commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, or his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So, sinong kabarkada ng wife? Ang mga baka, ang mga kambing, ang mga ari-arian, ang traktora, ang kotse, ang motorsiklo. Ang hindi pinapakovet sa Exodus 2017, property ng another man and the wife belongs to that. The context of not coveting your neighbor's wife is not to respect the wife, but to respect the man who owns her. Because in the Old Testament and up to the New Testament, a wife is a property. Kaya nakita niyo yung pagpapalaya ni Jesus sa mga babae? Yung kasakasama niya kahit saan, mga babae na hindi nagpapaalam sa mga asawa. Nagkaroon sila ng freedom from being owned by a man. Yung babaeng si Mary na nakikinig sa kanyang pagtuturo, kasama yung mga kalalaki, sabi ng Sister Martha, papuntayin niyo po yung kapatid ko si Mary sa kitchen where we women belong. Natanggap na ni Mary yun eh, ni Martha. Sabi ni Lord, eh gusto ni Mary maging disciple, gusto niya magturo, gusto niya maging parang lalaki, hayaan siya dito. She has actually chosen the better portion, sabi ni Lord. Pinapalaya niya ang sarili niya. Maganda yung pinili niya. You know how lovable Jesus is? Kung paano siya magmahal sa mga naaapi, sa mga kawawa, sa mga kapuspalad, sa mga nakagapos. Kaya sabi niya, come to me all of you who are tired. Nakakapagod yung religion niyo. Nakakapagod yung mga 613 mitzvot. Nakakapagod lahat yan. Ang commandment lang, love. Love is the greatest. Come to me. That's why all the religious people wanted Jesus dead. Because he was changing the system. He was setting the captives free. He was setting prisoners free. He wanted every person, man or woman, child or old, rich or poor, to enjoy life, to have a meaningful life, to develop their personality, and not to be the shadow of someone else, even if that someone else is your father or your husband or your mother. You were created in God's image, and Jesus was setting people free. 
the church system will make people feel guilty so that they will not want to be free or if they were able to be set free they will be willing to be caught again and be imprisoned again because they are guilty can you imagine the wife being classified with servants animals and properties so masamang pagnasaan hindi dahil sa isang marangal na babae kundi dahil property kasi siya ng kapwa lalaki at ang kinakausap sa 10th commandment ay mga lalaki. Ang kinakausap sa commandment on the Sabbath ay mga amo o mga masters, which are also male. So ano pa mga guilt nyo? Nagigilty ka na hiniwalayin mong asawa mo na lagi ka na lamang na pinagtataksilan, yun na nakawang savings mo, pineprenda ang mga alahas mo, tapos inuuwi ang ka ng syphilis, sisipin kung kanikanino, tapos uuwi ang ka ng mga gonorrhea, tapos ngayong umihiwalay ka, pinapagilty ka ng religious counselor mo, sabi niya, alam mo, ang gusto ng Diyos, bumalik ka doon, magdusa ka, because God hates divorce. Wrong reading. Meron pang isang accusation na lagi tayong guilty, materialism. Hoy sister, di ba, kristyano ka na, bakit ang dami-dami mong damit, bakit ganito, ganun. Guilt for having fine things. Guilt for being comfortable. Of course, this guilt is fed and fanned and promoted by the church that glorifies sacrifice, that demonizes possession of properties. Why? Because the churches want you to donate everything you have. Kaya pinapagilty ka pag may mga ari-arian ka, Brother, mas malaki pa ang bahay mo kaysa sa church. Diba? Nakarinig na ba kayo ng mga ganon? Mabuti pa yung bahay mo, may garahe, yung church, wala. Actually, may truth naman yun. Pero kung pinaghirapan niya yun, property niya yun, ba't mo pinapagilty? Proverbs 15.6 The house of the righteous contains great treasure. Righteous siya, kumikita siya, huwag mo siyang pagiltihin. Hayaan mo siyang magkaroon ng magandang kama kung gusto niya. If God blesses you with abundance, enjoy it. Just don't fail to share. Don't fail to give to God what is God's and to your fellow men the help, the charity that you could. But enjoy God's blessings to you. You don't have to be guilty for being rich. Eh, pinayaman ka ng Diyos, tapos babaliwalain mo, di binabaliwala mo yung bigay sa'yo. So another source of guilt is of course the excessive focus on sin and guilt. Wala nang itinuro kundi kasalanan, kasalanan, kasalanan. Kaya marami tuloy mga Christian, pag matagal na sa church, ang nagiging nangyayari sa kanila, wala rin inuungkat kundi kasalanan ng iba. Walang hinahanap kundi kasalanan ng iba. The burden of sin and guilt, of course, makes the priest and other dispensers of forgiveness look more important. Siyempre, lagi kang uusigin kasi nagiging mahalaga tuloy yung ministry ng mga religious leaders na laging magbibigay sa iyo ng kapatawaran kung nasa ritual ng simbahan na yun na pwedeng magbigay ng kapatawaran yung leader, naging importante siya, so lalo kang papagiltihin. Now, what are the cures to guilt and to needless guilt? Obedience to God, of course. You don't want to be guilty, be perfect. If you could. Babalikan natin yan. Another cure, knowledgeable, wise, and spirit-led scholarship. Pangontra sa pinag-usapan na natin kanina na careless or substandard knowledge of the Word of God. Mali-mali tuloy interpretation, mali-mali ang reading, nahihirapan tuloy. There should be differentiation of man's commands from God's commands. Men in the Bible, men outside the Bible, men in your church, man-made rules. Dapat clear, eto talaga yung Ten Commandments, pero... Sabi ni Jesus, dalawa na lang, love God and love fellow men. Ano ngayon ang relasyon ng mga ibang regulasyon ng buhay mo doon? Process it, the fourth challenge. Gano'ng kahalaga talaga yan? So they really feel guilty? Idinidik-dik ng pastor talaga, ng mga religious leader. Sunday is for the church. O may lagnat ka, hindi ka makapunta sa church, will you be guilty? Birthday ng nanay mo, may celebration kayo sa Palawan. Sasama ka ba o mag-church ka? Kung sumama ka, will you be guilty? It's a challenge for you. Process it. Against God's commands, against God's love, against what is needed, against what is practical, what is decent. Process it. Pero siguro naman kung 
out of the 52 weeks, eh, 40 na yung absence mo, dapat ka na talaga mag-guilty niyan. Tamaan ka ng kidlat, lumubog ka sa lahar. Kung gano'n na karami yung absent mo, no? Pero kung may mga mahalaga, may namatay, mayroong may sakit, may celebration, huwag ka lang lumampas ng more than 10% of the year na absent, dapat ka ba talaga ba guilty? But some churches will make you feel guilty. Why? Because they want you to attend. Why? Because when you attend, you donate. Eh kung mag-text kayo, Pastor, absent po ako, pero ipinadala ko na po sa Banco de Oro ang aking tithe. Baka hindi ka nausigin. Eh, a-absent ka pala, di ipadala mo para matulungan mo pa rin Kasi kahit absent ka naman, ganun pa rin yung rent ng building eh. Di ba? Kahit absent ka, ganun pa rin yung bills ng kuryente. So yung mga obligasyones mo, huwag mo pabayaan dahil lang absent ka. O pagka-present mo, doble. Siguro hindi ka naaaway eh, ng whoever religious leader yun nandun. Kasi siyempre, the church has to survive its economic responsibilities. So, a knowledgeable, a wise, and a spirit-led reading, interpretation, and application of God's Word, and church history. Kailangan niya ng tao para mabawasan ng excessive expectations, oppressive standards, needless guilt when you fail, and needless judgmentalism when others fail. Test. Para malaman mo, ito bang teaching na ito is to die for, to kill for? Is it really from God? Use this test. Is it easy and restful? Itong policy ng church namin na to, doable ba? Easy and restful. Because easy and restful is the style of Jesus. Pag oppressive, ang hirap-hirap, baka hindi na style ni Jesus yan. Ask yourself, does it make life easier and more restful? Is it Solomonic and Jesus' life? Does it condemn or affirm? Include or exclude? Accept or reject people? Does it make one self-righteous and judgmental and separatist? Itanong nyo yan. Ito yung meron kayong kaharap na policy. Rule, law. And you say, Hmm, pampahirap yan ang buhay. Hindi tayo dapat ganyan. Dapat pagkaanin natin. Kasi doon nga sa labas sa mundo, ang bigat-bigat na nang dala ng mga kapatiran, alam nga na mapagpasok sa chest, mas dadaganan pa natin. Mararamdaman mo kung off ang reading pag ito'y oppressive at papunta sa guilt trip. Parang papunta sa guilt trip ito dahil sigurado hindi naman ito masusunod eh. Halimbawa, may policy ang church, o ting linggo, alas 4 ng umaga kay darating dahil magdadasal tayo na tulong oras before worship. Alam mong, ay marami hindi makakasunod, magigilty lang gawin na lang natin 6.30. Ganon din naman yun. Another cure to guilt is of course confession. If you could not be perfect. Yan yung sabi natin kanina. Be perfect or jump to three. Confess. Do your best. Then acknowledge your shortcomings if your best is only up to so and so. Be perfect. But if you couldn't, when you fail, confess. Ang bait ng Diyos. Mataas ang requirement niya. Sabi niya, be perfect for I am perfect. Tapos may kasunod, 1 John 1.9. But if we confess our sins to God, He can always be trusted to forgive us and to take our sins away. So mga anak, dapat perfect ang grade mo. Pero kung 74, love pa rin kita. Yun yun. May mga anak, takot na takot sa magulang, nagpapakamatay pa yung iba dahil mababa yung grade. Kasi tinakot ng tinakot. Dapat mataas talaga yung expectation mo. I expect you to excel. I want you to be the best. I want you to win. But if you don't win, my love remains the same. Yun ang love ng Diyos. Love na hindi natin dapat gawing lisensya para huwag na tayo magsikap na maging mas mabuti ng mas mabuti ng mas mabuti. Total, patatawarin pala tayo. No sa pagtingin natin ang utang na loob, sa walang patakarang pagtanggap, sa walang hanggang pag-ibig ng Diyos, lalo tayong dapat mag-excel. Not because we are compelled, but because we want to return God's kindness. Hindi dahil tayo napipilitan, kundi dahil nating gustong suklian ang kabaitan ng Diyos. Kailan ba natin mauunawa, maia-apply at may enjoy ang pag-ibig ni Jesus sa buhay natin? 
Anong ibig sabihin na meron kang tagapagligtas? Anong ibig sabihin na may naguhugas ng iyong kasalanan? Anong ibig sabihin na merong laging tumatanggap sa iyo nagpapatawad? Ang ibig sabihin nun, relax. Be restful. And let other people relax and be restful also. Marami mga kapatiran, mas mahigpit pa sa Diyos. Diyos ang bahala. Gusto kong idiin, huwag gawing lisensya ito para maging pabaya. Pero lagi niyong katatandaan, pang nagawa niyo na yung best niyo at hanggang doon na lang, papunuan niyo kay Jesus. Siya ang pupuno. Siya ang perfecter of our faith. We strive, we struggle, but we cannot be perfect. So wherever we reach our maximum, our limits, let God be the perfecter. Let Him add so it becomes full. You want to be restful? Focus on forgiveness and justification in Christ. Focus on God's kindness. John 8, 7 to 11. If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Sabi ni Lord sa crowd na gustong bumata sa babae na nahuli sa kasalanan. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then, neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and live your life of sin. Caught in the act, the people wanted to stone her to death. And Jesus says, well, sige, yung walang kasalanan, mauna na lang bumato. Wala siyempre, naglakas ang loob dahil lahat may kasalanan naman eh. So sabi niyo, oh, wala bang bumato sa'yo? Wala po. Hindi rin kita babatuhin. Umuwi ka na iha at magbagong buhay. Loving. Very nice. Maraming Christian, brethren, kapatid, judges, accusers, condemnators. And that is the work of Satan, not of Jesus. So, the last cure in the list, but not definitely in the truth about life, is acceptance of one's humanity, mortality, imperfection in this life. Also, acceptance of other people's humanity. Kailangan matanggap mong tao ka, hindi ka pa perfect. But you grow in the Lord. You grow in Christ's likeness. Room for improvement is the biggest room in the world. 2 Corinthians 3.18, The Lord's Spirit makes us more and more like our glorious Lord. So while you cannot be perfect, you can get nearer and nearer to perfection, to Christ-likeness. That is doable. That is required by God. So ulitin natin ang sabi ng Panginoong Isa sa Matthew 11, 28-30 to give a context to everything we have discussed. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us strive to be Christ-like as much as possible. But when or where we fall short of God's glory, let us rest in God's love. Let your faith, let your religion, let your Christianity be a shelter, a resting place, a hospital, a healing place. Not a guilt box, not a courtroom, not a jail, not a torture chamber. Let us bring Christ back to Christianity. Let us bring rest and comfort back to Christianity the way it was during the time of Jesus when all the sinners were going after Jesus and they were following Him because they found rest and comfort and love and acceptance. The church cannot do less than be like Jesus. So accept your imperfection, even celebrate your humanity. 1 Corinthians 13.10 But what is perfect will someday appear and what is imperfect will then disappear. Sabi niya, darating ang panahon, the perfect will come, and the imperfect will pass away, 
all our imperfections will be made perfect in Christ. Pero darating pa lang yung panahon na yun. Sabi ng verse 13, For now, there is faith, hope, and love. But of these three, the greatest is, church, love. Darating ang panahon, sabi niya, mape-perfect tayo. Pero ngayon, hindi pa. So ang pairalin niyo, pag-ibig. Pag-ibig sa kapwa. Pag-ibig din sa sarili. Do not condemn yourself needlessly for a sin that you have already confessed. For something wrong that you have already repent repented for. Maawa rin sa sarili. Kumisan, hindi naman tayo malupit sa iba. Sa sarili. Kasi hindi natin napapatawad ang sarili natin sa mga kung ano mang nagawa nating mali. Gusto natin habang buhay, pasanin yung cross. You don't need to do that because Jesus carried the cross for you. And Christ died on the cross for you, for your sins, for your guilt. Be free. Take that burden off your shoulder. Get a life. Celebrate life. Worship God. And be the person that God wants you to be. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for your kindness and goodness to us. Suriin mo kami, Panginoon, kung kami po yung nagiging uh, masikip ang buhay dahil sa aming judgmentalism of others and of ourselves. Sa sobrang guilt na hindi naman pala dapat. Lord, ituro mo po sa amin yung mga bagay na dapat talaga mag kami pag mali at ginagawa namin. Pero bigyan mo kami ngayon ng clarity of mind, karunungan, na ihiwalay yung utos mo at utos lang ng tao, opinion lang ng tao, regulasyon lang ng organisasyon, Ituro mo sa amin, Lord, kung gaano kami dapat magsakripisya sa pagsunod sa mga ito. Gaano kami dapat mag kung hindi namin nasusunod? O dapat nga ba kami mag in the first place? Turuan niyo po kami, Lord, na lumaya para yung nalalabing mga panahon sa buhay namin, lalo magkaroon ng kulay, ng tunog, ng musika, ng direksyon, ng kabuluhan, at ng kagandahan. Set us free from our guilt and teach us to set others free as well. Yumuko tayo patuloy sa presensya ng Panginoon pag isip-isipan natin mga kapatid. Ano ang mga daladalan yung guilt na hindi naman dapat? Iwan nyo na ngayon sa pana ng Panginoon. Accept God's forgiveness. Accept God's grace and celebrate God's love. Ano ang mga pagpapahirap niya sa budhi ng iba na laging kayo umuusig? Magpatawad na rin kayo. And stop condemning others so that they too might have a life. So that they too will have rest and comfort. Let us set people free as much as we like ourselves to be free. Bring all of your cares, all of your guilt, all of this heaviness to Jesus because He has set you free already. Magbulay-bulay sumandali. Hilingin sa Espiritu ng Diyos ang pagpapalaya at turuan din tayo magpalaya sa ating kapwa. May the Spirit of Jesus, may His Spirit of love, His sacrifice, His atonement set us all free. Magbulay-bulay sumandali and let God give you a very personal message.